Well, good morning. I think it, let me see if I'm on here. Let me put it this way. It's working. Okay, great. Uh, I am Pastor Rick Carter, assistant to the bishop here in South Carolina, and it is a pleasure to be with you and gather with you this morning for worship, to share in God's word, God's love, God's grace, and forgiveness as a people of God. Uh, Pastor Chris, I actually I was uh, in the back and... and um, my assisting minister said, well, you're not Pastor Chris. I said, no, I am not. So I believe they are on vacation and enjoying some time away, and so it's a pleasure to be able to uh, allow them that respite. We get to help out on occasion uh, from the Senate office. It's not very often that there's a Sunday even open for us to, to be able to supply in this way. But again, a pleasure to be with you. Our service continues with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. If you would please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. We kneel as we are able. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have been dishonest, we have spoken ill of others, we have lacked the courage to defend our neighbors when needed. In the name of Jesus, forgive us, grant us the will to align our lives with you. Receive the good news. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ to walk in his ways. Amen. Amen.
Beloved of God, called to be saints, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. A reading from Exodus. Moses experienced the call of God when God appeared to him in a bush that burned but was not consumed. When Moses expressed his unworthiness, God promised to be with him. When Moses objected that people would be, demand to know God's name, God revealed his personal name, Yahweh, I am who I am, or the Lord. Israel discovered God's true identity when God took them out of Egypt. A reading from Exodus. <clears throat> Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, 
for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, 
we seek to live at peace with all people. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. children's voices out there, so this would be a great time to come up if you'd like to come up and join me. I know I'm a strange face and a strange voice this morning, but I promise I'm safe. You're smiling, I can tell. You understood what I was saying. Good morning. I'm going to sit on a cushion because otherwise you might be helping me get up. If I get too low there, I'd be like, help me, help me. I'd never be able to get up. Good morning. How are you guys? I know what is that called? A squishy mellow. Yeah, do you like it? I take it you do. It's a squirrel, chipmunk, squirrel. Okay, all right. Well, it's good to have you guys up here. Some of you I, now. I take it you've been in school. What about two weeks now? Does that sound about right? And you're smiling down there. How about you? What do you have? It's a hamster. That's very it cool. Has a, it has um, like a cage bird and my mom's pet. Well, don't let it get rolling around too much in here. I'm afraid of those kind of things. It's not even real. Oh, okay. All right. So you've been in school about two weeks, right? All right. And the first day did, for those of you that were in school, the first day, did they share with you, like, the things that you should do and the things you should not do? Yeah, yeah, I remember those days, yeah. And in fact, I still get those from time to time, you know. Don't do this. Remember to do this. Today, Jesus and the gospel story, uh, and actually we heard a little bit with, with the second reading we had there in Romans where St. Paul's writing, and he talks about kind of the way we should behave, the things that we should be doing. Like, you know, I mean, we could just stand up and just just mill around in here today and do nothing at all, right? And just say, yay, we came to church. And we could go back out to the car and say, let's go home, right? But then, yeah, right. But then what would we be missing if we did that? What would we be missing? We'd be missing each other, wouldn't we? We'd be missing an important story, a story what Jesus calls us to do if we believe him. Do we believe in Jesus? Yeah, I do. Jesus is absolutely amazing, especially the stories he tells us so that we learn to follow in a way that people will know Jesus. So what's a way that you show people at school that you know Jesus? What do you do? Are you kind? Are you friendly? Are at home? Are you nice to your sisters and brothers? 
Wait a minute, let me ask that question. Are they nice to their sisters and brothers? Do you listen to, when your parents ask you to do something, do you say, okay, yes, I'll do it right now? Or do you say, I think I'll wait. Can I do it later? Oh, I see the look on your face right there. You got to tell me your name. You, you intrigue me. What's your name? Aniston. Okay. So do you, are you one of those that kind of says, I'll get it in a minute? Yeah. Okay. At least you're honest. But see, we learn to tell these wonderful stories about Jesus through our lives by doing what we're called to do. Now, one of the things that Jesus tells us to do is to pick up a cross today and to follow. Now, do you carry around a cross to, at school? Do you carry around a cross at home? No. But what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying to us that the most important thing we'll do is to love one another. To love as he has loved us. And believe it or not, that can be a cross. Because it's hard. Even St. Paul today says, he says these things. He says, love your enemies, right? You're supposed to help your enemies and love your enemies even when you don't want to. That's carrying a cross. So, I ask this question of you. Can you today carry that cross of love so that other people will know who Jesus is? Can you do that? Maybe it's sharing your squishy <laughs> pillow, right? Maybe I need that for comfort today. Can I, can I hold on to it during the sermon? No? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I think you will do a good job sharing Jesus with others. So you want to pray with me this morning? Can you do that? I like to do prayer hands. So get your hands really wide apart, and we're going to clap them together at three. One, two, three. <laughs> Good morning, God. We thank you so much for gathering with us and showing us and telling us what it is to carry the cross of love so that others come to know you. May we have great years at school. Uh, may, this, may this year be absolutely amazing. May we make great friends. May we share your love with those friends and also with those that we sometimes do not like. Help us to be mindful that we're called to love all. In the Jesus' name we pray and the children of the light say... Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. Oh, ch children's, thank you. Yes, follow. There we go. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside. And began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. We were discussing in the office the other day when we go out to do supply 
uh, because at this moment, I'll, I'll share with you that uh, we do not have a lot of um, uh, supply pastors uh, within the church, uh, and interim pastors for that matter. So in other words, when a church becomes vacant and we're looking for supply pastors uh, and we're looking for interims, the church, we don't have them. We're not raising up leaders like we've done in the past from within the congregation. It seems that we have this uh, now this, uh, I will say, somewhat of a drought in those who are choosing um, rostered ministry or to serve the church in that way and ordain ministry. And it's a struggle for us. But we consider it joy and privilege to be able to come and, and be with congregations across the South Carolina Synod. Now with that said, with that joy also comes your pain because I don't know your service as well as your pastors do. <laughs> so I am gonna make those mistakes throughout this service and I ask for your patience as Paul writes today. Have that patience among you. You know, today in this gospel, Matthew, Matthew actually uh, is really giving us a, a message, but I always like to take, I'm one of those that I believe that we should look at text in, within its context. In other words, I'm not one to just simply pull things and to try to give you what I believe that it is saying. I like to be able to see it for the context in which it was written and also to be able to share that. So the context here, as Matthew is writing, is really to uh, proclaim to all those in his time as he is writing, particularly the Jewish community, that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the one who is promised. Would you pray, with, would you join me in prayer this morning? Lord God, we come this morning and we give you thanks for this opportunity to gather and to share with one another in your word. We come with empty hands, but we come with hearts full of yearning and desire to learn more, to walk faithfully with you. So as we raise our empty hands this morning, we ask only for that which will further your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our rock, our redeemer, we pray. Amen. In this particular text here, I'm going to stay with Matthew's gospel for a little bit here. In this particular text, it comes after some healing stories and some miracles that would occur. We have the healing of the Canaanite, the Canaanite woman, uh, her daughter, and others by the Sea of Galilee. There were, there were several miracles that happened there. And then there's the feeding of the 4,000 that also come before this particular text. And then one of my favorites is when the Pharisees and Sadducees <laughs> Having been witnesses to what was happening around them, what do they do? They come and ask, they demand, they demand a sign so that Jesus can share with them that indeed he is the Messiah, the promised one. And immediately before our lesson today, as if that was, were not enough, we have Jesus asking, who do people say that I am? And Peter, the one who so faithfully will just step out onto the water. He speaks up quickly, and he says, you are the Messiah. And Jesus tells him, he tells him, you, Peter, are the rock. You are the little rock upon which the church will be built. Now, what acclamation, what more could you ask for if you are Peter as a disciple of Jesus? You got it right for once. There's no admonishment. You've gotten it right. But wait, the story continues. And that's where we find ourselves today. Not only does Peter really stick his foot in his mouth this time, but Jesus admonishes him very quickly. We go to that text, and what happens? Peter, uh, Peter tells Jesus, when Jesus tells that the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem only to be tortured and killed, but to be raised in three days. Peter didn't hear the three days part, apparently. And so he speaks up very quickly, Lord, no, that's not going to happen. Now, here we are today. What does this story have to do with us? For 27 years, I have been bringing the word, and I have enjoyed every moment of it. There's nothing in this life that I'd rather do more than to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter where I am. In fact, my family will often walk away from me because they know I'm getting ready to speak to someone. <laughs> My kids, they're older now, of course, I have a 15-year-old at home as well, but she also is like, Dad talks to everybody. <laughs> and I do, because I enjoy sharing the gospel. And so I've started thinking about the way that I preach these days and the way that the word is shared. 
Because I think what has happened over the years is that we have become so accustomed to these stories, we forget the purpose of those stories for our own lives. And people need that. People are searching for that. How many of you have seen the movie The Jesus Revolution? Have you seen anybody seen that yet? Kelsey Grammer? It's, it's based on a true story of a pastor in California. And it was during the, the late 60s and 70s, during, during that movement, the, as I used to refer to it as the hippie movement. None of you were a part of that, were you? Yeah. <laughs> I came a little late. I was like, gosh, I missed out, you know? But, the, but the, during that time, and, and Kelsey Grammer, who is this, this pastor, and, uh, and of course he's, uh, and it's based off the true story, and he's, he's there and he's at his house in the kitchen talking to his wife, and he says, unless Jesus comes to the door and tells me how to do this, I don't know what else to do, something along that line. About that time, there's a knock on the door. If you watch the trailer, you'll see it. But it's a great scene because he knocks on the door, and here's the guy with long hair and a beard looks like Jesus. <laughs> And he comes in and he shares with him, you've got the story everyone's looking for, but man, you're not connecting with us. In other words, we've lost the idea of the purpose. What is it that we're sharing? What does the story mean for me? Matthew's purpose, yeah, it's clear. It's to emphasize that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. But we still, even today, like Peter, have expectations. We have expectations of what that looks like. We have expectations of what we believe Jesus should be doing. We have expectations of what our neighbor should be doing. We have expectations of what our church should be doing. We have expectations of what our synod should be doing. We have expectations, and the list goes on, doesn't it? Nowhere in there did I say expectations of myself. Where are those? It's an important question. We have expectations. So what are those expectations? You know, there are witnesses all around us today, even today. And you yourself probably have encountered those witnesses or have been witnesses yourselves to where Jesus is indeed the Messiah, where Jesus shows up where you least expect Jesus to show up. But what happens when we miss all those other times? It's because we have set our minds on human things. We've set our minds on the earthly things of how we expect it should turn out. So who is Jesus today and what's Jesus' purpose for us? I, Dr. Clay Schmidt, who was the provost at uh, Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary a few years back, he actually was uh, exegeting this particular text and he writes these words. He said, it is so much easier to imagine Jesus, to, excuse me, to imagine a Jesus who was a great moral leader, a teacher, even a miracle worker, than to comprehend that he could draw all humankind in one great self-giving embrace. The cross. It's easier to comprehend Jesus as, get this, Jesus as the great moral leader, Jesus as the teacher, Jesus as the miracle worker, but it is hard to grasp the idea that Jesus could bring the entire world, all of creation, together in one self-giving act. That's what's being said here. You may be here today because this is something you're accustomed to doing each and every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Right? Or excuse me, at 8.30. See, it's early for me. At 8.30 in the morning, so here you come. You come in. What is it that you're longing for when you come in? What are your expectations from when you come in to hear God's word? What is it that you're searching for? And if you're like a lot of other people, you're not quite sure anymore what it is to expect. You've joined with millions of others who, like you, are searching for meaning and purpose in their lives. And looking for that purpose and meaning that goes beyond comprehension. In other words, it's, it's a desire that we want to be valued. If I have discovered anything over the last 26, 27 years, is that I have noticed that people find themselves constantly searching for value in their life. And when they're doing that, they find themselves very empty. Because where are they trying to put the value? They're placing it on career. They're placing it on the amount of uh, 
uh, material goods or money that has been put back. They're placing it on other things that are not as important as you may think they are. It's kind of like the joke when the, when the wife uh, is there at the, with her uh, standing by the casket of her husband and the, the old joke goes this way that, that the uh, a friend comes up and says, well, did you put all the money in there with him uh, when he died? She says, yeah, I wrote him a check. <laughs> What's important to us? What brings us purpose? What brings us joy in life? Jesus is not simply a moral compass for us to follow. Jesus dies, not as an example of good behavior. Do not hear it that way. Not as an example of good behavior, but so to rise again and to reveal the incomprehensible power of God to change the world. No one had overcome death. It is Jesus who overcomes death. And through Jesus, we overcome death. To experience the fullness of Jesus as Messiah requires dropping those human expectations. That is, not looking for a sign or demanding a sign. Or to see the sign and then gladly falling in line and parade through the streets in the wake of Jesus' glory. That's not it either. Jesus shares that this is not the kind of leader he is called to be. He is not the one who to set things the way they were in the time of David or the time of Solomon. Jesus calls those who follow to deny themselves and take up the cross. And to deny the self takes great work. It is difficult. No matter what it is that you do in life, it is difficult to deny the self. In fact, self-preservation is a part of who we are. It's how we were born. It's nature. So to hear that we are to deny the self doesn't fit very well. So what does self-denial look like today? Maybe it means, or it does not mean, let's start with that. It does not mean that we're to remain for someone that might be in an abusive situation to, to say that I'm going to stay in it to bear the cross. No, no that's not it. Maybe it's, maybe it's not hiding out from, from life's joys and blessings and responsibility and enclosing yourself in self-righteousness and calling it self-sacrifice. So what maybe does it mean? I think it's attitudes and actions. I think it's attitudes and actions that make life meaningful. Genuine love for others. Tenacious goodness. Isn't this what St. Paul was writing about just when we heard that in Romans? Tenacious goodness and perseverance, even as evil encroaches, patience and suffering. Hmm. And my favorite, blessing even those who persecute. Cultivating empathy and rejecting opportunities for retribution and so much more. That, I believe, is carrying the cross. For most of us, cross-bearing means serving others with compassion. All cross-bearers are God's allies, right? And they often set aside their own agendas for personal advancement in favor of meeting human need. Hmm. Let me reread that. I put those two together for a reason. For most of us, cross-bearing means serving others with compassion. All cross-bearers are God's allies. And yet, you ready? They often set aside their own agendas for personal advancement in favor of meeting human need. In other words, they step aside and reflect Christ. The human need to experience life as someone valued. To bear the cross is to cling to the cross. When nothing else seems to work, cling to the cross. Dr. Tony Everett at Southern Seminary, another, I actually had the pleasure of, of having him for a class uh, years ago as a doctoral student and 
And he always, uh, all the students, if you were a graduate of Southern uh, Seminary, I was not a graduate of Southern Seminary, but as a, as a uh, graduate of Southern Seminary, he was famous in that you, he'd always do this. You, you point the bony finger toward the cross. That's where it should always be pointing. That's our life. We do what we do because God embraced us, valued us, died for us. And the best part, <laughs> there's no expectation. We're not going to get it right. Did Peter get it right? No. Do not have that expectation of yourself. Simply live fully and who, God, who God has called you to be, how God has valued you, valued you as a human being and simply see others in that same light. This is the good news. Amen. Amen.
whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel or sit as you are able. <clears throat> Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to the truth when we stumble. Bless visitors to our worship services that they may feel fully welcomed into our All Saints family. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Help us all to be good stewards of the earth which you created and to work toward answers to pollution and climate change so that all can have access to a healthy world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain, especially Grace, Grace. Lynn, Lynn, Marie, Marie. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Stephen. Chuck, Chuck, Asta, Asta Tina, Tina, Bill, Bill Melissa, Melissa, Pete, Pete Becky, Becky, and those we name before you now. <clears throat> Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, equip all saints to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he would take the cup, give thanks, and give it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come eat what is good. Thanks be to God. shed for you. 
blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of shed for you. you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. All the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. 
time, I understand this is normally when you do announcements, I will share with you. I have one, which is God's Work Our Hands Sunday is next week. Uh, so with that, I will open it up. Is there, is there something that should be shared that is not in your bulletin? If not, wow, this is a first for me. Okay. All right. So let's receive God's blessing as we go forth this week, remembering that we are indeed valued and loved in ways that only God can love us. The Lord God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.